This is the SBA Update, exclusively on ASBN. Hey everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick. Thanks so much for tuning in to the SBA Update, exclusively here at ASBN.com. Today we're exploring regional nuances in the entrepreneurial world. We're talking specifically uh, in the Southeast. So joining us now to discuss more on this topic is Dalaur Syed, who is the Deputy Administrator at the U.S. Small Business uh, Administration, and Alan Thomas, who you've seen here before in ASBN. He is also with the SBA Regional Administrator as well. So gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thanks for having us. Sure. Sir. So before we start with you, uh, Mr. Deputy Administrator, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to join us here in the studio, tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Absolutely. So I'm a tech entrepreneur turned uh, public servant. I spent more than two decades in Silicon Valley building uh, tech companies. Uh, most recently, I ran a company that was in the healthcare and AI space. We were using big data to predict future state of risk. Okay. So we could give you a sense of what is, you know, might be coming down for you in mm -hmm. health. So we could do preventive care and reduce the cost of care. Prior to that, I took a software company uh, public, um, mm -hmm. you know, that was a great success, actually serving many of the small medium businesses across across main streets across the United States, mm -hmm. worked at Yahoo and, and some other larger companies. So I cool. bring that operating lens, if you will, sure. uh, to SBA, which, you know, during the pandemic had to scale yeah. nearly 20x. Wow. So we need oh operating gosh. DNA to be able to build systems and processes and the internal right. guts to be able to serve this moment. Sure, sure. Thank you for sharing that, because I know a lot of the viewers that we've got, uh, you know, viewing each day, uh, that means a lot to them. And the fact that you are a small business owner yourself and right. grew businesses to a, to a large uh, scale. And uh, that means a lot to, to business owners out there, that they've got somebody in charge at the SBA that knows exactly what it is that they're going through, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, look, um, also, as, a, as you are alluding to this, as a business owner, I had to raise funds myself. Yeah. You know, you had to knock 50 doors and VCs before somebody right. would answer the door. Sure. And so that's why when you look at um, our priority, the administration, uh, we've been focusing on democratizing access to capital mm -hmm. for all communities, so right. from, for entrepreneurs of all backgrounds, make sure that we can unlock capital at this very unique moment in our mm -hmm. recovery. Sure, sure. Alan, I see you shaking your head. How important is that today, right now in, in, in 2024, that capital is available to small business owners? Well, what we've seen, Jim, and it's good to be here today. Thank yeah. you so much. Is that we've had an explosion of startup businesses over the past couple of years. There's been a record number of startups. Many of them are first-time business owners, mm -hmm. but uh, the key is training mm -hmm. and access to capital. Mm -hmm. Really significant. And what we've seen uh, with SBA, uh, just record numbers of uh, businesses launching and coming to us for how to get traditional lending and also other types of uh, innovation lending that SBA is at front and center on providing uh, as a catalyst for small businesses yeah. to launch, uh, to grow and expand. And, and that's what we're seeing here in, in 2024. Sure, sure. And I agree with everything that you just said. The capital is really the oxygen that small business owners right. need, right? So Deputy Administrator, before we start uh, further down this road, what, what have been some of the biggest priorities uh, for the SBA in the last year? And how was the climate for small business in 2023? Absolutely. So one, uh, you know, access to capital is a key priority. Yeah. And let me share with you a few of the reforms that sure. we have launched, which are pretty historic. Uh, number one, we lifted a, a moratorium that was placed on small business lending companies. These are non-depository uh, de non non, uh, institutions okay. who often show up in underserved regions. Apparently, mm -hmm. we could only have 14 in the country. And we lifted a moratorium after 41 years. That was in place since President Reagan's administration. Oh so gosh. now we can have more wow. of yeah. these lenders and markets where we need uh, sure. you know, more competition sure. uh, for lending. One example is Funding Circle. It's a mm -hmm. fintech that now is accessible to anyone in the country, That's any great. small business owner, to be able to go and yeah. access funding. So we are backing them. Um, other, we have streamlining role, you know, our, our lending. As you may know, or many of our viewers might know as small business owners, the small dollar lending has been on the decline for decades. Right. It's not just recent, it's been happening for a long period of time. Right. We've made it simpler. So if you're a small business owner, mm -hmm. and you're looking at a $50,000 loan, mm -hmm. you want to go to an SBA back lender, you just provide 20 pieces of information versus 150. Wow. So that is an incentive to yeah. banks yeah. to now make sure they can give the you know appropriate amount of energy and bandwidth to process smaller loans, sure. these express loans, and this again designed for us to uh, democratize access to capital for smaller, sure. do smaller dollar lending. Sure. And finally, as Alan mentioned, on the innovation side, we have a program called America's Seed Fund. Mm -hmm. So SBIR, SGTR uh, grants 
these are, uh, they don't dilute you as a okay. company. You can apply for those grants if you have a technology you're developing that requires commercialization capital. That's fantastic. And, you know, it's funny, you mentioned small, uh, small amounts, uh, $50,000, but as you know, to many small business owners, that could be a lot of different. I mean, the difference really between life or death for them, right? Absolutely. And, and to make it more accessible is, is so vitally important. Probably the reason that we see a lot more advertisements now for the availability of SBA funds, right? From not just your traditional banks, but also these other carriers that you talked about. Absolutely. And also, you know, look, uh, we have a recovery uh, from the uh, mm -hmm. pandemic that's been going pretty well. Yeah. Last quarter, the GDP grew 5.2%. Yeah, amazing. I've run business globally. Yeah. Frankly, you don't you see these numbers in emerging markets, yeah. not in the world's largest economy. Right. And that's, that's amazing, right? Yeah. So as Alan mentioned, we're entering the year with 16.1% million record number of new small business starts. No kidding. Now, really? Obviously, starting a yeah. business is easy. You have to get it to the next yes. stage. Yes. That's where you, you, you require funding, mentorship, and support. And that's where we come in. And finally, let me also say this. All of this is happening in an environment where we are investing in a country at a level that we haven't done in decades. Mm -hmm. If you look at 2022, we had some historic legislation, bipartisan infrastructure bill, bipartisan Chips and Science Act. Wow. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah. Those are investments we are making in building what we call industries of the future. Mm -hmm. EVs, batteries, mm -hmm. um, renewable energy, uh, advanced semiconductor manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We did not put a fab in the country for decades. When that happens at, the, at that scale, uh, you can also see a new class of startups emerge. Mm -hmm. uh, or Main Street economies will also expand to serve those new industries. Sure. And that's why we are seeing uh, so much of uh, small business uh, boom, which obviously we need, we need to deliver on. With that's all right. That's right. And, and so it's, it's interesting you make those comments because so many people that will write into the show to say, is this a good time with all that we hear going on out there? Is this a good time to start a business? And we've talked about this before. It's a great time to start a small business right now, right? Especially with all of the different key indicators that you just talked about. Absolutely. I mean, look at the GDP. Yeah. You know, the stock market is, is a sentiment as well. Sure. We all follow that. I think that, that shows you as well. And then this is also the fourth year of our administration. A lot of this work is going to be in the implementation phase. Yeah. So um, there couldn't be a better time. Yeah, no question about it. And uh, we see also interest rates on mortgages nine weeks in a row. They've just been declining. Gas prices are coming down. Unemployment's at an all-time low. So it, it is a good time. For those of you that are out there that are wondering if this is a good time, uh, it is. There's no better time than right now to start that business. And uh, obviously, the SBA is here to help you do just that. So talk to me about uh, the visit that you had um, at the White House, the White House initiative on Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and uh, Pacific Islanders, uh, the economic summit. What, what were some of the big takeaways from that? So um, we do this uh, on a quarterly basis. We bring the economic summit that serves these communities around the country. Mm -hmm. This time, uh, we, we are doing this in in Atlanta. I actually am a former commissioner on that on, on oh, the initiative awesome. back in President Obama's administration. So it's interesting to be back in there, sure. speaking about the SBA's various services. Um, look, I mean, our our goal here is to reach all communities. Yeah. And sometimes you have to have uh, you know tailor program for these communities that historically have not been served. Uh, um, as well as um, you know other communities. So this is our attempt to close the gap, whether it's black entrepreneurs, Hispanic entrepreneurs, Asian American entrepreneurs, rural entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs, sure. veteran entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, so that's that what the summit is about. I also took the time to spend some time in the metro region, mm -hmm. uh, visited uh, Georgia Tech's Met Tech Center, um, was at the Georgia State University yeah. uh, Entrepreneurship uh, Center there as well, and saw this this incredible. Um, you know, number of startups and yeah. small businesses that those universities are supporting and make sure that our team, you know, gets to know these communities and make sure we are serving them. Given that we have an office here in Atlanta, and sure. I'm sure, you know, many of our small yeah. business owners here in the region benefit from the office. Yes, yeah. we're very, very uh, uh, lucky to have what we have here in Atlanta with the universities and, of course, with some incredible incubators right here in Atlanta as well, right? right? right. Yeah, so it's a real hot spot. Um, do you see similarities or differences as you visit entrepreneurs in different regions of the country? And can you talk to talk to us a little bit about that? I think it's more sectoral. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, uh, you know, when you look at the tech sector, um, there's all, often a challenge of, of talent. Um, you know, I remember hiring uh, data scientists and working very hard to retain them. Yeah. So whether you're in Atlanta or Austin or, or San Francisco, that challenge is somewhat similar. Um, so I, I do think there is uh, sectoral, there are similarities, uh, but differences. I let um, you know um, um, Alan talk about what do you, what do we see in the region here. But for sure, when you look at whether it's entertainment and film and some of the logistics networks that are here because of the big airport, sure. we have 
some major brands are operating. Yeah, that's you right. know, this region that's right. has yeah. a certain core. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I, I often find in Atlanta, uh, which is pretty inspiring with, uh, about Atlanta, is the diversity of its workforce. Mm -hmm. You know, in the metro region, you know, we have some of the world's brightest minds that have assembled here. Yeah. So I think it's a it's a great place. Um, even as you know, we've seen historically with some of these industries where talent is a big challenge um, that folks are always clamoring mm -hmm. uh, to be able to hire and retain people. But I think Atlanta yeah. does have, um, it, you know, that works to its advantage by having access to those talent. Sure. I asked questions about the entrepreneurs that we met today at GSU and Weather Tech. Um, you know, would you call another place a home? They said, no, they'll be here because they can have amazing access yeah. to local talent That's right. from the local universities. That's right. And our cost of living is, is very reasonable. It's right. not like it is in Northern California, San Francisco or New York City or some other area like that that maybe we compete with in, in, that, in that scope, right? Yeah, and, and accessibility here in Atlanta yeah. is extremely important for access to for travel and connectivity. Yeah, that's right. And just the ecosystem of universities, not just in Atlanta, but in Georgia and the Southeast region. I call it an ideal collision space for innovation. Yeah. That's what we have here in Atlanta in this region. <laughs> collision. And, and, I like um, it. Yeah. It's um, all coming together. And we, we, we really are. And in uh, Atlanta, its best days are ahead of it. And yeah. it's really to see the, the, the community leaders and the city leaders uh, really emphasizing it. We just, uh, we just left from a panel and, and uh, some of the most significant leaders across this city were there to have a, um, a real direct conversation uh, with Deputy Administrator about all the opportunities that this region presents and how can we work together collaboratively and create yeah. a task force yeah. for growth. But it all starts with that person who decides to launch a small business. That's right. And do you get to them and get them the training and the resources and the funding uh, and the proper know-how of how to take that path forward? That's where it all begins for SBA, and we have a great team here getting that done. Yeah, no question. Um, what are some of the biggest achievements that you've witnessed thus far? Well, this past year, <laughs> we've really seen a phenomenal growth. I think when we look back uh, in a decade now, post-COVID, and the year of 2023 will be known as the, the year of the woman entrepreneur. Really? We see an explosion of, of women entering the space. Yeah launching their own business, not just in the Southeast, but yeah. across the country. Yeah. And we need to rise and get ahead of that and um, and get make sure we're getting the right resources. But also we've seen a lot of veteran owned businesses mm -hmm. launch, you know, in the past year, we're working very diligently to get them the resources. You know, the, the U.S. government yeah. is the largest uh, pro, you know, provider of goods and services in the world. Yeah. And uh, the Southeast is uniquely positioned to be able to capture these contracts and opportunities, 23% yeah. of all government contracts are to go to small businesses. And that's something- that, That's if, a mandate? I mean, that's, yes, that's something it, that has it, to happen. It is, wow. and the SBA's that's job great. is to oversee and make sure that happens. Yeah. So if you haven't looked into the procurement and government contracting space, yeah. uh, for whatever you come from, it's yeah. a phenomenal opportunity. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And let me just add to that. Sure. Um, look, I mean, we all can agree on this, that the entrepreneurship is the ultimate equalizer. Yeah. It can lift entire communities. That's right. It can lift all boats. And that the president has been very, very clear out about this from the very get go. In addition to making sure that 23% of the contracts go to small businesses, uh, the president also called out um, that 15% of all government contracts should go to socially disadvantaged businesses. Mm. So black owned business, yeah. um, Hispanic owned business, Asian American, mm -hmm. women owned, Native American owned business. And he made that um, commitment mm -hmm. uh, in a speech he delivered in Tulsa, Oklahoma mm -hmm. uh, at the 100th anniversary of the Black Wall Street that was burned oh, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing, that was an emotional commitment. Event. It was an yeah. important commitment that meant a lot to him and to sure. all of us. And I think, sure. I'm sure everybody could agree with that there's a lot of folks that have to be made whole. And so if we can divert that 15% of $650 billion, which yeah. is what we spend annually as the United States government to buy goods and services. Yeah. That's a lot of, oh, uh, you no know, um, part of money sure. that can really lift a lot of these entrepreneurs who are in federal contracts. So I would encourage um, viewers to take a look at government contracting, federal contracts, if they right. visit sba.gov to see how they could participate. They can go through certification processes to get certified as yeah. a government contractor so they have a shot at this mm -hmm. uh, opportunity mm -hmm. as well. And that's great news because, as you know, so many times when we talk uh, to those business owners, those entrepreneurs in those different areas or in those different sectors, they will tell you that they just don't feel like they're getting help or the money is out there available to them. Uh, many times they don't know about the SBA. You know, right. they don't know about all of these great programs right. that you that you all offer and have right. set up specifically for them. Right. Right. And if I may say, look, uh, we often hear, and I heard this today when we met these folks of, uh, with folks in Atlanta. 
you know, while, you know, the bureaucracy can be sometimes intimidating, yeah. it's hard to yep. buy for a government contract. Well, I have gone through contracts in private sector. Yeah. Let me tell you, they also take time. <laughs> That's uh, right. I sold, That's right. I sold uh, my, um, you know, technology uh, um, uh, product uh, to healthcare plans. Yeah. It would take two to three years to close a contract. So we know as entrepreneurs, we yeah. have we have the grit. We have That's to right. hit the pavement. You have to, you know, so it's, 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 a, it's a challenge we take in private markets. I think we need to manage expectations. The government, it's the same challenge. The difference is this. Once you've gone through the process right. and you build the relationships in the network, you get to know people in Allen's team locally and folks, you know, across the country, you know, and different agencies, those relationships will be so crucial for you to continue yeah. to win business and expand business. So we highly encourage folks to participate. Yeah. And if they just make that first step, that's right. then you guys are there with, with open arms and all of these different ways for them to go and you help them all the way Absolutely. across we the board. Absolutely. We have, Jim, folks in our district offices right mm-hmm. here in Atlanta who are contracting specialists. Yeah. These are taxpayer-funded yeah. resources. So there you go. That it's, folks it's, can yeah. leverage and get, you know, at no cost counseling. Sure, sure. They're already paying for it. We're paying for it in our taxes, right? It's already... That's right. So that's it, right. It, why not use it? That's you right. You know, it's... it's it's yeah. not. It's not. It shouldn't be seen as a weakness. It would. It should be seen as a strength. You know, if you're yeah. smart enough to go out and get that stuff, go get it, folks. It's. It's literally waiting for you. <laughs> well, I'm a prime example. I mean, uh, we have these great partners. The thing about SBA, it's not the biggest federal agency, but we our amplification is tremendous. We have the small business development centers, which are yeah, all, all throughout, pervasive right. across the That's whole right. country. Yeah. The, the the veterans business outreach, the women's business centers, wow. the scores who are retired and current yeah. executives yep. that for They're free help you launch yeah. your business. And um, it's just really key. We think to uh, go to sba.gov mm-hmm. and look for your state or your area and we'll get you connected with the right team, just like they did for me. Without that, yeah. I walked in with an idea on a napkin. Yeah. It turned into a company back in 1999, and the rest was history. <laughs> but, um, I hope but the company I'm, wasn't creating napkins for it. Uh, no, that's been a great idea. <laughs> but we lost a healthcare technology wow. securitization that's fantastic. Uh, out of an extra bedroom. And um, so I'm, you know, I, I speak from someone with the experience sure. directly with SBA. And, Take the time to take a look. I know as entrepreneurs, we really get tunnel vision sometimes. Yeah. We're so focused on what we're doing, but realize resources like this are the difference between success That's right. and opportunity. You just got to reach out and grab it. That's right. And the answer is, is I love, you know, small banks, they're great and you guys do a great job. However, when it comes to entrepreneurs and looking for that capital, without the SBA, if you're going to walk into a bank, Chances are the answer is no. <laughs> so, so the SBA is your best friend in, in starting your business and driving more uh, business to your business. I mean, they've got so many different answers here in a, in a way to help you. So in closing, Deputy, uh, Deputy uh, Administrator, talk to us a little bit about what your forecast is for small business in 2024. We actually think that we're going to see an, uh, even further growth uh, as we go into this year, um, in part because you know, we, we are the potential for the interest rates to be yeah. uh, more optimal. Um, and even in, a, in an environment the interest rates were high, we actually did more funding. You know, SBA backed $54 billion worth of wow. uh, funding last year. That's fantastic. And there's been growth year over year in yeah. almost across all communities, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, our funding went up. I think this year we expect more of that to happen. Also, what's happening is after the pandemic, uh, you know, while it's in rear view and we still have challenges, mm-hmm. there's been some resurgence of that. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of communities are coming back yeah. in. Uh, you saw just with the uh, success we have with Small Business Saturday and some of the numbers we saw yeah. this past, That's right. That's past right. week. So, sorry, past, past, past year. So we do expect next year to be um, another growth year. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, we know who makes it happen. It's our entrepreneurs. That's right. right. Uh, we still are, you know, the president says it all the time. Our economy has recovered better than any other industrial economy in the world. Yeah. Wow. And even inflation, which has obviously been painful yeah. for all of us. We all know this sure. on, a, on a daily basis when we, uh, you know, are consuming. But we've seen that it's been a decline uh, in inflation and hopefully the price will be stabilized, which is, sure. you know, gas, uh, prices that are under three dollars in most states That's now. Right. Look where we were a year ago. That's right. I mean, that is intentional. Yeah. The way the policy has been run to make sure that we are paying attention to this. All of that is connected, right? Yeah. And so we are very optimistic mm-hmm. uh, that we will have a great year. And obviously, you know, all of us have to execute on this. Yep. So this is a big, big implementation year. No question for us uh, at the administration. No question. Three letters that can change your life. S B A. I'm telling you, we're gonna. As I said, we're gonna make a link right below this video that you're watching make the click, just click it, okay? Take the first step because I'm telling you, you're gonna like what you see. They have helped millions of other small businesses and entrepreneurs 
open up their businesses. So gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I very much appreciate it. Love to have you back to do a follow-up. Thanks for watching the SBA Update exclusively on ASBN.